Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. It's a story of race, pain, loss, survival, perseverance, harnessing an acquisition of power, and ultimately success. Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream chronicles the journey of a young black man growing up in poverty in a small South American uh, country, rising to become one of the world's most preeminent scientists in the pharmaceutical industry, developing drugs that fight diabetes, seizures, and cancer. It's the memoir of Dr. Frank L. Douglas, a reflection on the events and people who made him into the man he is. Dr. Douglas grew up in the British Guiana with his mother, four siblings. His love of education earned him a Fulbright scholarship, came to America during the turbulent years of the 1960s. He worked and was involved in pharmaceutical research for drugs that treated tuberculosis, arthritis, diabetes, seizure, cancer, pulmonary embolism, among others. He received the Global Pharmaceutical Research and Development Director of the Year Award in 2001 and 2004, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Organization for the Professional Achievement of Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers in 2002, Black History Maker Award in 2007, the Jeffrey Bean Foundation and GQ Magazine Rockstar of Science in 2010, 2010, and the Caribbean Heritage Award for Entrepreneurship in 2011. Dr. Frank L. Douglas, author of Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir, our guest on This Week in America. Dr. Douglas, a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. This is such an inspirational program of, uh, uh, that we'll talk about today with uh, featuring the book. First of all, describe the, uh, the meaning of the, of the name of the book, the title, Defending Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream. Yes, interestingly, the title represents my name. It turns out that Frank, uh, origin is Celtic and means Freemason or Freeman, and Douglas, is Scottish and means from a black stream. And in my book, I tell how I discovered that because that I was not aware of the name of my name, Frank Douglas. Yes, and it's sort of appropriate that it comes about, and you, you talk about that in the book. It's such a great read from so many different levels, Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir. At the beginning of the book, it's interesting. You're 16 years old, and you're talking to your, your minister. And you're asking him, why does God relegate people of color to poverty and being colonized? Why does God have favorites? And you really didn't get an answer, did you? You know, I have to admit, and I say in the epilogue, I really have not found an answer uh, to those questions. But the one thing that I have found is that when the Lord said, that do unto others as you would have and when he says when you do this to the least of them you do it to me is something that has stayed with me uh, and uh, I feel very strong that if indeed we simply did that namely do unto the least of his disciples that we would be blessed and the world would be blessed you know that's an interesting thought and what you went through at the time 16 in fact you had a bleeding ulcer later and you you decided you're just sort of not going to get an answer to that question but it's interesting because i think many people from time to time will ask that specific question maybe not get an answer and then just sort of accept it and move on. It's a fascinating beginning of the book, Dr. Frank L. Douglas, our guest, defining moments of a free man from a black stream, a memoir. Let's talk where the autobiographical account begins. You're 12 years old and you were accused of dumping some, some groceries and this really had an impact on your life. Talk about that experience because talk about shaping you that really shaped you in, in your young adulthood. Uh, this is the first defining moment yes. in a real sense in my life. Uh, it was uh, a Saturday, my job to buy the groceries. Uh, unfortunately, as I returned home and pulled into the yard, my bicycle skid and we lost everything. My aunt, who unfortunately for some reason always seemed to have negative things to say about me, 
uh, actually reported that he saw me push the basket of groceries purposefully off the, the cycle handle. My poor mother, because that meant probably for the next week or two weeks we would go with very little, uh, was so angry. She gave me a whipping uh, that I will never forget. I was so traumatized by it that I immediately left the house and decided that this was enough. I would take my life. So I walked three or four miles to the seawall, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, to take my life. And very frankly, uh, I got scared as I faced the reality of basically drowning. And uh, that turned me around and led me to go visit uh, a woman whom I visited every Sunday that turned out to be, according to her and later according to my mother, to actually be my grandmother. And it was from her I learned the identity of my father. I returned home still very angry, now really trapped. I had no place to go because I had asked the moms, as I called this woman, whether I could stay with her and she declined. And so I returned home with so many dark thoughts, uh, really about doing something very harmful physically uh, to my aunt, uh, that I decided it was time for me basically to give my, uh, my life the Lord and to become uh, a born-again Christian. And that actually was the change of my trajectory. You know, what's interesting is it getting all of that information, that revelation would break so many people. It actually gave you determination, as you were talking about, and, and turned your life around. The book is Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir by our guest on the program, Dr. Frank L. Douglas. I mentioned this this fascination you had with education and which led to the Fulbright Scholarship. Talk about that and then leaving the country and what you found when you came to the United States in the turbulent 60s. And I gave you a whole lot to talk about there. Let's go back to, to education. Where did this thirst for information, education, knowledge, when did that start for you? Well, uh, I think it's, it's not a typical uh, for particularly poor, but almost every Guyanese youngster. It is drilled into us, since there were no universities in Guyana, that in order to improve our lives, we had to get a scholarship to go and study either the University of the West Indies uh, in Canada or in England. So from about age 9, 10, this consciousness of studying hard and excelling. Uh, in my case, as one of my former classmates uh, back then, uh, after reading the book, he sent me an email and he said, we all knew that you were going to do something special in life because you were always so serious about your studies and you were always driven to be first in every subject. And we could spend a, an entire program talking about that, but it's so interesting how you were shaped as a young person coming to the United States and all the success that you had. Dr. Frank L. Douglas is one of the most highly honored and respected leaders in the pharmaceutical industry. You come to the U.S., it's the turbulent 1960s. Talk about that because you really were shocked at the, the level of racism that you found here in the U.S. Uh, this was uh, quite disturbing for me and quite a shock. As you know, in 1963, I arrived about two weeks before uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's march in Washington. Uh, in that year, that November, uh, President Ken Kennedy was assassinated. Earlier that year, Medgar Evers was assassinated. Uh, and I began to recognize that I could not attend the churches here in America when missionaries from those very churches had come to Guyana and had convinced us that if we became born-again Christians, we all would ultimately go to heaven and we all would be one. Uh, so that was a surprise to me. It was even more surprising 
when I was faced with discrimination, but when I spoke and people recognized that I had an accent, uh, they then would back away and sometimes even apologize, which made it very clear to me that there was something really uh, uh, strange at the enmity for black Americans. And when people saw me, of course, they saw me as a black American. So there was no, no difference. During this period, and you talk about it very openly in the book, Defining Moments, that uh, struggling with faith, with identity, talk about how you, and this might have been a, an evolution, decided to, to really control your own future. You set out with determination, hard work, what you call the road less traveled, which is exactly what you took. How did you, how did you deep down find that inner strength to, to carry on in the face of this overt racism? Well, uh, I, I think my, my faith was such that I struggled very hard, very diligently I worked in the first two years to bring together my religiosity uh, and that which I had learned in Guyana with what I was seeing in America, and I couldn't do it. In fact, I actually <laughs> suffered an ulcer, and they were really quite surprised because I did not smoke, I did not drink, I was an athlete, I was doing very well in my classes, and they asked the question, was anything really bothering me? And initially I said no, until one day, it occurred to me that I was struggling so hard to harmonize what I was seeing with what I had learned in the evangelical church at home, that it was impairing my health. And I decided at that point to step away from organized religion as such, and to really pattern my life after my stepfather, I call him Uncle Willie in the book, who was not a church man, but a decent man, and a man with such love and tenderness for others, that I said, that's how I want to live my life. I live a life that is caring, and a life that is contributing to others, as my stepfather had done, without, uh, without being part of any organized religion. With us on the program, our guest is Dr. Frank L. Douglas. His book is Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir. The book's available at uh, Amazon. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. One thing that, that comes out in the book is character is not just our destiny. It's the legacy we leave behind. Talk about that because you have impacted so many people in such a positive way throughout your illustrious career here in, in the U.S., talk about that, the, the legacy and the importance that you followed people. They shaped you, who you are. People are being shaped by who you are. Talk about the importance of that to you. My mother has had a, a very strong influence in my life. Uh, she was the first person who believed in me. Uh, and she had many statements. One of them was, to whom much is given, of him is much required. Uh, another was uh, virtue is its own reward. Uh, and she basically instilled in me, as well as in the church, in school, this drive that it was important what we contributed to others and what we left behind. And in fact, it's probably best stated in my personal statement that I wrote many, many years ago in which, in that statement, I begin it by saying, I want my life to be centered on enabling others to discover and to do that which is noble and fair. Uh, and I have tried in my life, I've studied hard and I've tried to apply that always in a manner that it can enable myself and others to better the life of others and to do that which is noble and fair. You talk about the the road less traveled, and we've got a few minutes left in the program. I want to talk about that because so often we don't take that. We take the traveled road and we pay a hefty price at times for that. 
talk about your decision to take the, the road less traveled, why that was a viable option for you. In a real sense, it was more in reflection, a retrospection, that I recognized that I had a, a pension to take the road less traveled. And I think it was because a lot of what I did was value driven. I was focused on values like mercy, like being authentic, uh, like having self-control, uh, justice. And, and that drove many things that I did. So as a result, uh, I made decisions that others would not have made in the same situation. Uh, I focused on what I could contribute rather than what I controlled. For example, uh, when I was at SEBA, I remember, uh, I had the, the IT department under me. And my boss came to me and he said, you know, uh, one of your colleagues, uh, we really would like to give him more. Would you give him the IT department? And I said, of course. And I gave it to him. And my good friend and colleague, Vince, came to me and said, you never give things up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's part of your power base. And I said, no, Vince, he will have more time to work in IT, and I will benefit from it. And I've only asked of Harold, that was uh, his name, I've only asked of Harold, that he treats me as a preferred customer now that he is in charge of it. So I would do things like that. I would give up opportunities. Uh, another example is when I first went to SEBA, they offered me two possibilities and one job was at a higher level. And I reflected and I told them I did not think I was ready for that job. I would take the lower job. And they said to me, well, if you do that, you will be paid less, you have a lower title. I said, I would rather do that. I think I can contribute more in that job. The result was that 14 months later, I, the other department was added. Two years later, without ever having been a vice president, I went from becoming an executive director to a senior vice president and head of research for the US. Now, had I done what most people would have done, namely take the higher paying job, the higher level job, that probably would never, I probably never would have uh, ended up being yes. uh, uh, the head of research. Where does that confidence come from? Was that again instilled in you at an early age that I don't necessarily have to follow the conventional wisdom here. I know you take the higher paying job, but it just doesn't feel right to me. You end up leapfrogging that and doing fine for yourself other than that where did that that come from that confidence that i can afford it to go in the right direction even if it's not what people fully understand you know i look back at that uh, particularly in my early days in high school uh, uh my confronting uh, uh, a very important and powerful principle uh when all of my classmates came out of that meeting saying I would be expelled, etc. Uh, and he ended up giving me one of the best recommendations amongst us, amongst uh, my, my uh, fellow classmates. And I look back on incidents like that in my life, and I can only say that when I did something that was value driven, nothing bad really happened. And I think as a result, that encouraged me uh, to do that. Does that mean that, uh, does that mean I, that I did not have disappointments? Not at all. There were times when I did have disappointments. But throughout my life, I focused on the process and not on the outcome. I focused on what I thought was the best thing to do and said, I will deal with the consequences and not seek excuses and i think that is uh, that you know those things just sort of built a confidence that doing this will ultimately uh lead uh to good outcomes even if the immediate outcome doesn't look as good a couple of minutes left in the program talk about when you leave the country an interesting set of circumstances as you're leading your leaving your your native country and again this this quiet, calm, calmness, confidence that you have. Talk about that experience, how that happened that they they got you out of the country on the next flight. Ah, 
you're probably referring to the the experience I had, the <laughs> incident with the prime minister. Uh, the prime minister, uh, his name is the, uh, uh, Burnham, Minister Burnham, we called him Comrade Leader, uh, <laughs> had reached out to me on three different occasions during my studies in America to return home uh, to take up a position in his government. And on the last visit, I had arrived uh, uh, one afternoon and two hours later, I was visiting with uh, a a friend of mine called Walter Rodney. Walter Rodney was quite a scholar and had returned to Guyana with the express uh, intention of working against and opposing uh, Comrade Leader Burnham. No sooner did I arrive at Walter Rodney's place that a messenger came and told me the Comrade Leader would like to see me immediately. So he took me in a car to the Comrade Leader and we had a conversation in which he offered me a job somewhere off in the interior. It was very clear to me what that, did, that was. Uh, I suggested to him that there was something else I could do since I was in medical school that would be of benefit to the, to the country. And he then looked at me and said, Comrade, you have this uncanny habit of always telling me how to run my country. Now, here's my advice to you. I want you to leave this country right now and never return before I die. And I was about to respond to it when I heard a sound. I turned around and there was the Guyana Defense Guardsman with his drawn gun. Uh, and I then said, well, Comrade Leader, as you know, I need an exit permit to leave the country. Uh, and he said, that's all arranged. And uh, a few hours later, I was on a flight to Trinidad and the following day back to the U.S. Uh, I must tell you, six months later, Walter Rodney was assassinated. Uh, so it probably was, in a way, a blessing in disguise that uh, uh, I it was hurried out of the country. It's such a great book. It's, in fact, it's been called Great Inspirational Gift to Society. The book is Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir by our guest on the program, Dr. Frank L. Douglas one of the most highly honored and respected leaders in the pharmaceutical industry. Dr. Douglas, it has been a pleasure having you on the program. It's just a, a, an excellent read. It will motivate many people. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us on the program today. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. It has I been our pleasure. The readers enjoy the book. I'm sure that they will. And the book is Defining Moments of a Free Man from a Black Stream, a memoir. Dr. Frank L. Douglas is the author. If you go to uh, our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Amazon or just go to Amazon, look up information on the book, and you can uh, you can purchase the book there as well. You're listening to This Week in America. You'll find us online at thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. <laughs> 